What is going on, Memphis? I have a very special guest with me in the studio today, John Filippo, the new head coach of the Memphis Showboats. I appreciate you flying in with us, uh, to doing the kind of the media tour around Memphis right now. Uh, what was the, the flight like? You know, I mean, you're coming in from Florida right now. Uh, yeah, no snow in Florida, but the flight in was good. Uh, I was shocked when we came out of the clouds to see that snow and ice on the ground, but yeah, it's weather you deal with it. I'm just so happy. Memphis has been so welcoming to me since I've been here, and I really appreciate it from everybody. All right, so you spent last year with the New Orleans Breakers as mm -hmm. their head coach. But you've had coaching stops in the NFL at the college level and now with the USFL. What is kind of each stop? done for you and, and what has it taught you about now being a head coach for the first time well I guess the second time in the USFL yeah you're constantly growing you know constant never-ending self-improvement is what I talk to our players about all the time and, and it's the same way as a coach you want to keep getting better and better every year and establish trust with your players uh, I've been fortunate to be on some really really good teams the 2017 Eagles we win the Super Bowl and I've been on some teams where we've won three games and so you, your mental toughness gets challenged both in both good, you know, good times and bad. So it's awesome to be in this chair again, and I'm very fortunate for the, the opportunity to coach the Memphis Showboats. For sure. The USFL uh, had its couple of years. You've now done the XFL, so it's a UFL, right. uh, the merger. What has that experience been like kind of navigating all of those waters and, and you know, bringing those two leagues together? Well, I think the most exciting part about the two leagues coming together is for our fan base and for our viewers because – Unfortunately, you cut the football jobs in half, but the best players from both leagues are going to come together in one league. And so the product on the field is going to be better. Um, our viewers are going to think it's better brand of football. And obviously, we want to create a, a great fan base here in Memphis, so they want to come out and watch us play. Went 7-3 and three with, the, with the Breakers last mm -hmm. year, qualified for the playoffs, and then unfortunately it closes down, the, the right. league itself. But you got that phone call. Uh, what was that phone call like about becoming the head coach of the Showboats? It's a great story. I was on aisle six in Publix with my daughter, my three-year-old daughter at the grocery store. And uh, Daryl Johnston, who most of your viewers know is the great fullback for the Dallas Cowboys, uh, he runs the football operations in, at, at the USFL and also now at the UFL. He called me and said, hey, I apologize, but the New Orleans Breakers are, are no longer, but we'd love for you to come coach the Memphis Showboats. And it took me about a second and a half to say yes. I said yes right away. It just needed to process my brain because this is such a football crazed state. It's such a football crazed city. Uh, it's really exciting being here. For sure. <laughs> we are a basketball city. I think anybody would tell you that. But you, the more you be here, the more you are here, people are really excited about having the Showboats in town. I think you, you could really feel that in those first couple of years. I know you're going to have, you've already had the draft um, mm -hmm. and you were able to select, you know, players from some of the USFL teams that disbanded. Uh, what was that process like? And did you pay special attention, you know, to your to your players from from the New Orleans Breakers? Of course, of course. It's it's my job as the head coach of the Memphis Showboats. I'm no longer the head coach of the New Orleans Breakers. It's my job to do what's best for our football team, for our city, and for our organization. So at times, I had to take my heart out of it and, and draft the best player available. Uh, there will be 17 players. There were two drafts. Over the course of two drafts, uh, we drafted 17 players that were with us with the New Orleans Breakers. And we were the, really the only team in, in the new league in the UFL to cross party lines. We drafted, you know, five, six, seven guys from the, the XFL. So we wanted, we owed it to our team and to our city to draft the best player that was out there for that position of need. And so, you know, you see a lot of these teams that stayed in the XFL or stayed in the USFL with the players. We tried to get the best player from either league. And it was a lot of work. Our coaches did a great job of evaluating. We watched a, a ton of tape. And, uh, but in our minds, we got the best player, players available. What is different about these players on, on the UFL level? You've been in the NFL. You've obviously been at the college level as well. Mm -hmm. What is different about these players um, that makes, you know, the US, or UFL such a league that people should be watching? It's a great question. Uh, a lot of times success as a young player in professional football is the situation you get in, okay? And there could be a guy that maybe tore up his knee as a senior year in college, okay? Maybe he was a quarterback that got into a system that really didn't fit him, okay, so he couldn't shine. The guys that have a lot of success in our league usually have had a taste of the National Football League. Not all the time, but usually. And they've been on a practice squad for a year or two years or they've been active for a year and for whatever reason need a, need a place to play. And they're this close away. They're, they're literally this close. And that's what our league is so excited about is we offer the opportunity now for those guys to put this on tape and, be, and get that, that little bit that they need to jump to the next level. What should people know about John DiFilippo, the man, 
and maybe not necessarily John DeFilippo, the coach. That's a great. I love that. Um, I love my three-year-old daughter, Reese. Um, uh, I, there's, is she a football fan? She is. By default? She, she, yes. <laughs> and she knows she always says daddy has a new team. So, mm. so she knows that daddy's not coaching in New Orleans anymore. Um, I'm still waiting for the new gear to come out, you know, because I can't put her in old USFL gear. I wait for the UFL gear to sure. come out, you know, to get her a jersey. Uh, I love to play golf. Uh, I love my friends. I love my family. Uh, and I love football. Uh, I like teaching. And so that's what the best part about the job is. For sure. Uh, what excites you the most coming into March 30th and that, that first weekend of football starts? What excites you the most about training camp and getting these guys ready? There's nothing better than being on the field. Uh, I view the building the, is, I call it the fortress. And everything that's going on in your life like that, that may be not so hot at the time, you can walk into your fortress and feel safe and be around like-minded people that love football, that just want to get out there. So I enjoy the escape. I use football because is, is, I love it so much. And I'm so passionate about it. I use it as an escape, and that's my happy place, you know, and that's my happy place. I love being on the field, love coaching, love teaching, uh, love watching men get better at something, love watching team form. Um, there's nothing better than sitting back and, and setting goals and setting areas you want to get better in, and then watching that team form in the right way. So we're excited about all those things. You were an assistant coach for a long time mm -hmm. at that pro level. You had your first year as a head coach. Um, what is different about being a head coach uh, than being an actual assistant coach? Ev everybody's problems come to your desk. <laughs> that's, the, that's the best way to put it. Yeah. Everyone's problems, and everyone, and, and, and because everyone's so focused on, on doing their job at a high level, everyone's problems, they think they're the worst problems in the world. Where When you have to sit in this chair and you're, for the first time, you're, you, you see the game a little bit differently from more 30,000 feet, and you realize that what you know, they think it's really, it's not going to be, you know, whether we have a good practice or not. It's not going to win or lose us a ball game. And you just got to constantly just, just get the pulse of the team, get the pulse of the coaching staff, and make sure everyone's pulling in the right direction. All right, the obligatory Memphis question, two Memphis questions. A, do you like Elvis? And B, have you had some Memphis barbecue yet? Yes and no. Now, that's not my fault with the Memphis barbecue because we tried yesterday and everyone, everyone was closed. Sure. So I promise... Memphis, I can't wait to get out and try some, some barbecue. I, I apologize, but a lot of the restaurants were closed last night. I'm sure they will flood the comments and tell you where you should be. And as you Please, take them coming, because <laughs> my Friday night, like night four games, yeah. that's like my, what I like to do. I like to go out and try a different place. Very cool. Okay, okay. that's a good that's little routine. A, yeah. So, Sweet. All right, so yeah, well, keep I'm, those sure, comments coming. I'm sure there will be plenty of people as you kind of get settled here that will tell you, like, oh, you need to be going to this place, you need to be going to this place. Right. We'll be going to get you right. Well, all right, John DiFilippo, new head coach of the Memphis Showbuzz, we appreciate you coming on set. We wish you the best of luck this season. We look forward to watching you guys. Thanks for having me on anytime.